Hello all. It's having a bit of trouble down here with the signal. Um, so seeing your comments on the uh, screen. So I'm wearing glasses. That's better. Okay, for all that know me, I'm obviously Steve Mayer. Um, probably know me off the river scene. I've um, been fishing probably coming up now 35 years, something like that. Been lucky really that I've lived in Bewdley a lot of my life, uh, which has helped me along with fishing rivers, being so close to one of the, the best rivers in the country really. Um, where did I start? Well, passion really is in fishing for roach, silverfish, that sort of thing. That's where I started out fishing stick floats and wagons and that on the river here locally. Uh, probably started match fishing when I was probably 15, before that in junior clubs. But it's it's moved on a long way to what we have today. Um, it really does feel strange in these times at the moment, not being able to go. Uh, really weird, but we'll come through it, I'm sure. Going on. I can see a bit better now I've got my glasses on. Hello Ray. Sure. Can you actually see me out there? Right. That's a good place to start, Clive. Um, best match with. Oh, there's been a few. Um, where do I start? I think one of the most memorable ones has got to be probably going back to 2014 at Shrewsbury. Um, Shrewsbury is probably an all-time favourite venue for me. Probably fished there on and off now 20 years. Um, yeah, it's always been a great water. We've always had the top anglers there. It's always a place where you feel you want to do well. Um, yeah, so really, but brings me really on to the, the most memorable match win up there. Probably be the Riverfest qualifier in 2014. Uh, remember that year, I'd had quite a poor year running up to that event. Poor draws, not particularly doing that well in the competition. It's one of the later matches. Um, I remember I drew and it was a a reasonable area, which was peg 35 on Frankwell. Um, you know, no Shrewsbury or no, that can be can be a bit of an it or miss area. Um, but it was early October, so I knew there'd probably still be a few fish there. Um, I remember setting up just a couple of rods, kept it quite simple. Bolo, stick. Um, I did set pole up, not intended to use it. Um, it was really it always used to be a loose feed venue, so I've done a tactic with loose feed, a maggot and emp, just fish bolo most of the match. But uh, what was memorable about the day is it just the, the sheer volume of roach in the peg. Uh, it's just an, an amazing day. The conditions were right, everything was perfect. It just all came together on the day. Um, so yeah, it was a, a memorable one that. I won the match, I think it's £30, £30 all roach, which is it's probably one of the iconic catches up there at the time. It's, what made it extra special was it sort of brought the venue back to life at the time. We hadn't been fishing it for quite some years uh, up to that point, and it just seemed to just put the venue back on the map. I remember on the day, um, I qualified with that way, so I won the match for the £30. It's probably one of my 
more memorable wins in recent times. Um, but it's always good to get up there and fish. So it's a, a memorable one. I mean, moving on from there, uh, the final, I think that year was at Hereford. Uh, it didn't quite happen for me in the final, but it meant a lot for me to, to even get there at the time. Paul, how are you? Jimbo. That's a good question there. Okay. Clive says, Okay, Steve, what's your secret to catching Barbel on the seven? Uh, and is it the same as the why? Well, it's a good question that because having fished the seven probably from, you know, a young age, uh, there is a massive difference between the two rivers. Everyone says, oh, barbel a barbel, but they are a lot, they behave differently. Um, the seven fish, I think probably slightly, they are more pressured. Um, and they do demand quite a, quite a refined approach. And I think one of the biggest factors in catching them, um, and some of the biggest mistakes I see is people using um, too big a feeders and really fishing it almost too positively um fishing too heavy um i think you know the tra traditional feed i've got some here um I seem to keep them quite small using things like that the black cat feeder which everyone's probably familiar with um and small cage feeders these are nicer ones just a couple of types that i use um, I think the seven fish tend to be a lot more pellet orientated as well. I think it sees a lot more pellet. Um, also say it's, I carry a couple of cases of feeders with me all the time, I fish for them. And I usually carry black cap feeders in sizes from 30 gram up to four ounces. Uh, quite a straightforward um, set up just with um I just set these up with um stops with a three or four foot up um, that's with pellet for, um, I think on the wire I tend to use more natural baits um maggots casters that's always scored better for me on the wire um 
So my record's probably a hell of a lot better on the 7 than it is the Y, the Barbell. But could be just a case I'm just not drawing in the right areas at the right time. It's the most important part of it all at the end of the day. <laughs> Leon Blondel, what's the secret to catching barbel wherever I go? <laughs> That's a good question as well. I think it's a case of positivity, really. I mean, a belief in what you do. Um, if you're doing something, if you do something regularly, um, you just get better and better at it, and you also get to to have a feel for the situation. So if you're in the area and you know the fish are there, and you're confident in what you do then you, you kind of know you're going to catch fish. That makes sense. It's quite, yeah, intuition, I guess. Well, Sean. <laughs> uh, no. I'll probably be better at that than this. Jason. Realising how blind I'm getting having to wear these glasses to see what you're writing. Uh, that's another good question there, Clive. Um, yeah, will I ever start making floats again? Um, as you know, I used to actually sell a lot of my floats to, to retailers all over the country. Um, I had lots and lots of shops at one stage, probably in excess of 100, 100 and odd shops that used to buy off me. Unfortunately, it's just the smaller retailers just all closing down. Um, makes it difficult really to put big orders together to maintain it. Um, it's a little bit more niche now. Um, still a big demand for it. I may well do them again and start doing them just online selling them online to people um, it's quite a nichey thing these days but I won't rule it out it might come back uh, Mark Doherty yeah very well mate I'm guessing you're looking forward to getting on the Y every day when it opens favourite running line method Leon Good question, mate. Um, depends what the venue is, really. Um, took on the Avon, probably Waggler. Um, stick, but yeah, predominantly Waggler on the Avon. Um, seven, it'd be Stick. Uh, probably on the Y, Bolo. So it varies, really, from venue to venue. I would say I've got one favourite method. We used to fish Stourport a lot. There's one thing I could do, just continue it, just catch big roach on the stick. But, yeah, that's, there's not many places you can do that now, is there? Here's a good question here. Brian Priest, if you're allowed, if we are allowed, are you going... All out for Riverfest qualifiers. Um, not this year. I've got four tickets. Uh, it's Butley, Bridge North, uh, Stratford and Hereford. Uh, I might go over to the River Yare. Yeah, um, there's, there's usually spare tickets available for that. So really, no, I'm staying local this year. I'm not chasing it. I'm hopeful that we'll be, we'll be fishing again, possibly... July time but we just don't know do we that's what it boils down to we just don't know there's 
a good question. Colin Bennett. Steve, I've never been a fan of pellet. Prefer hemp and castor. Summer maggot for drawing fish. What do you think pellet advantage? It's a good one, that Colin. Um, I think whether you fish pellet, I perceive pellet to be a big bait, really. Um, I tend to look at what's in the swim as well as barbel. So if there's other species in there, like there's a lot of small, really small nuisance dice and stuff, that sort of rules out maggot. Um, again, if there's little chub there and stuff, constantly shelling the caster. If I know there's just barbel in the peg, or little else, I'd, I'd prefer to use a maggot or caster. Um, but again, when there's a, a mixture of fish, the pellet seems to select the barbel, if that makes sense. So like baits like punch meat as well, which has come in a lot more over the last couple of years. Um, a big advantage I had actually a few years ago, um, I was fishing punch meat, uh, but I managed to keep it quiet for quite quite some time. Won a lot of money with it, and um, sort of it become sort of the genie was out the bottle. And I know Dave Roberts now is fishing it quite regular, having a lot of success with it seems to fish it in a much more positive way than I fish it. He fishes much bigger feeders. Um, I think I just showed you the feeders. I tend to, to keep to quite small ones. And you, look at, you can imagine the size of that. See that? sort of size which is 44 gram on that what I tend to do uh, put the meat for a six mil cutter and push it into these Nisa feeders 44 gram and some of the bigger ones there's a couple of ounce on that one 60 gram which is you know probably is that size feeder is as big as I'd go um, but probably up to three four ounces of lead on that Again, just push the push the meat into the feeder. Cube it up six mil through the cutter. Um, eight ten mil punched on the hook, three foot tail, four foot tail. Um, so I don't use anything too fancy there. Doing well, Steve. Hope you are too. <laughs> oh, great question, Lee. I think I should ask you that one. What's the secret to drawing a good peg? Oh, I don't know. I think get you to draw it. Live, what do I think of Port Talbot docks? Right, yeah. Obviously, I've been there just the once last year and fished that mini festival you were on. I um, was quite impressed with it, to be frank. It's a great water. Um, very different to anything elsewhere. It's deep. The bream tend to come in quite close. So, a lot of theories we have about bream fishing, you can throw them all out the window there, really. Um, but it is a great venue. It's one that I'd like to, to fish more. I think it's a place you need to be fishing for a long time to get good on there. Uh, I know you've been fishing there many years and you do have the results down there and it shows, you know. Like everything, the more we do it, the better we get. Mark Doherty, favourite peg at Hereford. Wow. Hmm, it's a good question. There's so many good pegs at Hereford. Um, I think 96 is everyone's favourite on the right day. Um, but there are other good areas. The railings is very good on the right day. Uh, anywhere at the back of Asda's on the right area, right day. 
lot of it's determined by water level as well. Tennis courts, very good with some water on. Yeah, there's a lot of good choices there. Favourite pegs, always one with lots of fish in, Mark. Scott Glover, put a fish away in a pool, I drew one on Flabbery, hmm, yeah, well, weir pools tend to be, they're all different in a way, but I'd look for a, a flat spot in the weir, um, a flat area where you know there's good, it's going to be relatively calm, it's going to be a calm area, probably approach it with, depending on the size of the weir, if you can get across there with a pole, all well and good if you've got a fish feeder, but yeah, I'd look for a, like a, a dead eye, where you've got the water coming over the weir, and then you'll obviously have a main flow somewhere, and there's usually a, a, a bit of a, a flat spot somewhere, and that's where I'd look to target to catch fish. Yeah, keep him well, Jeff. Hope you are too. <laughs> Lee, I'm sure. Uh, hoping to see you at Earlswood again soon, mate. We had a good festival there, didn't we, last year? Quite a strange feeling doing this. You're quite like, you feel like you're talking to yourself, really. Very strange feeling. Not done this before. Probably shows. No, not many questions, Lee. I'm disappointed. I want people to ask me questions. It always helps the conversation flow a lot better, doesn't it? I'm just blathering on about, you know, matches I've done well in in the past. There's just that many. I can't seem to be able to pick one out at the moment. But there's, there's been so many over the years. I guess I've been lucky. Um, favourite peg at Eversham, Leon? Well... Favourite peg, that's a good one. I think peg one would probably be a peg one on the town. Uh, it's probably the most consistent peg on there, isn't it? Lots of different options. Um, a lower river, you know, 35, 36. Bit of water on down in the cafe meadow. 64, 65, 70, 71. White House Bend. A lot of options, mate, there. Uh, Jeff Britton, favourite peg at Beaudley. Mm. Again, it's all dependent on the levels there, mate. This, What's good one day is not good when this three foot comes into the river. Say in the summer, I'd look for fast, shallow pegs. Um, in the winter time, some of the steadier pegs tend to be a biggest river weight in a match. Mark up to uh, biggest river weight in a match is a hundred and forty pound barbel, beautifully. Uh, it's a good question there, Clive. What's my previous best bleak weight before? What was your previous best bleak weight before the one on the wire? Um, I've had a few thirty pounds on there. Um, I've never drew a, a peg as solid as that with such big bleak in. Uh, that day was really was a day to remember. Um, I've only really turned my attention to bleak the last two or three years. Um, to be one of you know, you just got to do it if you want to be competitive. It's too many times and there's a lot of bleak in the peg, and if you ignore them. You know, you just, you're not going to get through them. You just need to learn how to catch them. And I put a lot of practice into bleak fishing over the last, as I say, two or three years. I've been lucky, really. I've got Stourport on the doorstep here. That's absolutely infested with bleak. So I'm able to 
refined my skills at that. It's been just been good, stood me in good stead, ready for the why. Um, but it's something I'm not the not the finished polished article with bleak fishing. Um, there's a lot I still need to work on there. Good question, Lee. I'm not many chub. No, I'm not off the Eastbourne anyway this year. Um, I have heard there could be an otter in that area. It could have something to do with it. They may have moved down, moved up. I know they've done a lot of damage on the river here. Wherever otters turn up, it's not good for fishing. <laughs> Mark Doherty, favourite bleak hook and float? That's a good question. I actually got some here. Thought I might get asked that tonight, so I was prepared for it. Um, on the day I had the big weight, 46 pound, I used one of these, which is a Tatao float. You can see that. Um, and on them I tend to use sensors 3065 and 16s quite straight for I me mean, that's on my two and a half me two and a half meter width uh, which I use a census record for that just cut the tip back a little bit so it's quite pokey um, little bulk of shot four inch tail um, and as I say, those hooks, you can't go far wrong, and they've got a long shank on these. You can see it in there. Yeah. See them there. That long shank really helps. You can thread the maggot on. Um, you can get hold of the shank to unhook the fish really quickly. It's like brilliant, brilliant hooks for that. That's by far the best hook for that type of fishing on there um, dead simple 014 main line um, well actually I use an 013 guru N gauge right the way through with that those hooks are tied to that as well some four inch tails if there was one place Paul Baker if there was one only one place you could fish where would you go Wow I think places fish differently all the way through the year. I think if I could just do one thing uh, for the rest of my life, I'd probably just fish Shrewsbury in the winter when it used to be the place. Uh, and you got like 70 or 80 of the best anglers going up there, and it was just brilliant. And the fishing was so good then. It weren't big weights, but you'd have 15, 20 pound on a lot of pegs. And if you worked at it, there's always reward to be had. So it'd probably be my all-time favourite to just to go forever. Um, but I do so many different disciplines now. Um, bream fishing this time of year normally. Love doing that. Obviously, when the when the um, season's open, beyond the river barbel. Yeah, there's just a lot of different disciplines. Time of year, really. That dictates it for me. Time of year, the species I'm going to target. Time of year, what matches I'm going to fish. <laughs> oh. Float fishing on beauty. This is quite a good question, Paul. When float fishing beautifully on the seven, do you need to fish over depth to slow your bait down, or off bottom for the best results? Fishing for chub and barbel. It's a good question, but it does vary really on the conditions that you're faced with. Um, I think if the river's carrying a bit of water and there's some colour in, you're always better to try and slow it down, maybe drag some line on the bottom. If the water's low and clear, 
in shallow, usually summer conditions, you can get the barbel to come up off the bottom. Um, and you know, they will come up, loose-fed hemp and casters, even loose-fed pellet, banded pellet on the hook. You'd be surprised how far off bottom you can catch barbel. Uh, there's a couple of swims here, which are 12 foot deep, um, but I have caught them five and six foot on them sort of pegs and shallow, three foot at times. Ray, what is Ray Caddick? Go to ground bait for the Y in the town stretch in winter. Um, I just tend to keep things basic, really. You know, for um, Census River, Gross Garden, mix 50% with soil. Can't go wrong with that. Or the last couple of seasons I've used um, Bait Tech Pro Natural again. It's 50% 50, 50 with uh, Riddle Molehill. Can't go wrong with it. Great carrier, sticky, gets your bait down. All the ground bait is really is a carrier, just to get the bait down. Mark Traves, hi Steve, hope you're keeping well. I know you, like me, love float fishing. Apart from the float champs at Beaudley and the float onlys, there aren't many other match organisers pushing for them. Why do you think that is? Um, a difficult one, really. I think, I think there's definitely a call for more float fishing. Uh, float champs has proved you can get 50 guys that want to fish the float, even in the summer. I think it's a matter of getting people to organise it, getting enough organisers out there to, to bring us um, a few matches. I think that's the difficult point. We all want to fish matches, but no one wants to organise them. Russell Millwood, All right, Russell. Little Phil. Uh, that's a good question there, Claude. Preferred bait for barbel, meat or pellet? Um, again, it's it's a case of trial and error. Um, I tend to fish in a way that I can keep my options open to fish either bait. There'll be days when pellet works and there'll be days when meat works. Um, if I'm using like pellet in loose pellet, a lot of time on the seven I'm using black cat feeder with loose pellet. Um, I have a feeling that tends to make the fish drop down the peg if you put them dry bait in through these, which is what people do. I tend to damp them down a little bit and use them through these small cage feeders. A, you can use a shorter tail. And B, that the fish tend to stay in the peg more in front of you. You don't have so much problem with fish dropping down the peg with that. Um, books I use for barbel, uh, just these 911 X. It's a barbless pattern actually. I use them in size 12s, 10s, and 14s. That's for air rigging, big baits. That's that one. Um, if I'm using maggots and casters, I tend to use Gamma Power with that one. Uh, what rods do you use? For, what rods do I use for fishing these days? Wow, there's lots of different rods on the market, isn't there? Um, for years, I used um, Tournament 13, 15, and I still use those at Shrewsbury, places like that. I've had some Mac 3s, which I've had a long time, still use those. Uh, feeder wise, a couple of Super Team feeders I use quite regularly. Shakespeare Super Team, don't make them anymore. Great rods.
That's a good question from Lee Simpson. I noticed you've spent a lot of time preparing rigs for next year's winter campaigning on the wine. When tying running line rigs on winders, what length of line do you use? Right, it's a, it's a really good question that. And um, I tend to keep it dead simple. I've bollows, I tend to only put five foot of line on. Uh, so I've got my Olivet, the main bulk of blocker shot with some droppers and then fish out a 10 inch up length and then when I put that onto the winder I've got a big loop at the top and what that enables me to do is in pegs which are like 8 to 10 foot deep I can push the rig up onto the main line so you push it over the big knot onto the main line so if you do break off on the knot you're only losing the olivet not losing the float as well Yeah. I'll come back Lee actually I'll show you a rig I'll come back to you Lee So that's a rig on a winder there, Lee, and what I tend to do is I tie a small loop into the reel line, and you can join it loop to loop then with the big loop off the winder. And on there, as you can see. Short length of line. foot of line. That's a bit of, I don't know if you can see that on there. I tend to have a decent amount of shot below. It stops it kicking back over the over the line here when you cast. But it's versatile as well. I can bring some of them shots down to play, down into play during the match. See so this one I've got four number eights on. Three gram float, four number eights, but I can bring more down if I want to push the olivet up. I can do that. Colin Bennett always use Maxima for. For float, now always use Maxima for float seven feeder. Have you stuck with it or have you changed? Um, I have changed over the years from time to time, but I always end up going back to it. Um, I think that could come from slightly lazy, really. With I don't like keep changing line on my reels every five minutes. I found a lot of these modern lines just don't last. Uh, you'll, you'll use them for a couple of outings and they just seem to need changing so regularly uh, when I put Maxima on it just lasts and lasts I've got Maxima on reels well I've had it on there you know 12 months and it's still good I only change the line once a year obviously I've got I've got lots of spools so I'm not just using the one spool all the time but yeah I don't have to keep changing it it's one of the reasons I've stuck with it it's durable tough it's got a lot of stretch in it as well it's just a it's just a fabulous line really and it's stood the test of time um, see no reason to really change it if I want the line to float what I will do sometimes I put tiny tiny um, blob of Vaseline onto the, the end eye of the rod and what I can do with that I can reel the float right up to the top of the top eye of the rod and then obviously that that will float the line 
all the way down the all the way down the, the length of the rig. So it's uh, there's a good tip that to if you want the line to float well. Uh, Barry, what diameter of line do you use to tie bolo rigs? Um, I think this one here is three pound maxima is around about oh oh seventeen oh eighteen. Uh, I think it's oh fifteen in two and a half. So oh fifteen to oh seventeen oh eighteen. Uh, but again, if you if you're going to be targeting barbel, I'd go up to like oh twenty oh twenty two. No problem at all. You want to get the fish out. Barbel fishing, no, that's a good one. That uh, real line for barbel fishing. Uh, a few years ago, I got put onto um, an American type line, which was for spinning, but it's got virtually zero stretch in it. Uh, and I, tr I tried this line out, and it was just unbelievable, really. Um, and I've used it for feeder fishing for about over 10 years now. I bought a lot of it at the time. And it's not deteriorated, I've kept it in the garage, kept it in the dark, and it's kept really well. And it's called, uh, I've never seen this in the shop, it's actually called P-Line. That's 028, £10. And it, 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 it's so robust as well. Uh, it's called a Fluoro Clear. From, it's just absolutely brilliant stuff. As I say, very little stretch in it. And a reasonably low diameter, oh, 28, 10 pound. It's never let me down, so I'll continue to use it until I run out. And I'll be left with a dilemma of where to move next. I used to use Maxima though many years ago, six and eight pound. And to be fair, if you put that on, you're not going to get any problems. You know, you look at oh, probably oh, 030, the eight pound, probably more than that, oh, 031. You're not going to have any problems with that. Ah, hook length line, right. Um, used lots of different ones over the years. Um, I used Silstar, um, well, I think it was Silstar match team from 018 up to 026. And that was a really good line, but the properties of that have changed now. I don't think it's made in the same place, it just isn't as good. Um, so I'm, I've gone back over to a line called Stroft. And again, I use that 018 up to 022, 024. That hasn't let me down yet this year. I've been using it with, in conjunction with these hooks. With those um, three and four foot tails, 020, 022 with maggot feeder. It's been very, very good. That's a good question there, um, Miles. Uh, how do you decide what weight flat float is right for the flow? Um, do you go for as light as you can get away with or heavy? Um, what you don't want to be doing is fishing one too light straight away. You don't, you know, you don't want to be using a light one. But then you don't want one that's just ridiculously heavy. Um usually find when I set set the rig up um I don't tend to overshot them too much. So say it's a five gram float, you might have some like five and a quarter, five and a half gram on it. And you'll find it will naturally want to the bristle will come up out of the water. Um but you don't want the body to lift as well. Once the body starts lifting the float's too light. Uh, so what you want to be able to do is lower the rig in and be in contact with the tip without too much of the body riding out, without the, the float being ridiculously overshotted. If that makes sense. Quite difficult to explain that without practically showing you. But yeah, if you've got carrying rigs in your box between 2 gram and 15 gram, you'll cover most situations with those um, sizes 
um, yeah, as I say, overshotting. Try not to overshot them too much. They, they don't work as well. Um, as I say, most of the rigs I use are, yeah, a little bit overshotted, but not loads. Not loads. A good tip with that actually is to carry where you've got the your bulk, your olivet or your bullets on the line, on the rig. If you've got BB, AA and Swan Shot, um, you can make the fine adjustments by just putting a BB on to begin with. If you feel it needs a bit more, just remove it and put an AA on. Again, go up to a Swan Shot and then likewise two Swan on some of the heavier rigs. But yeah, it's a good, it's a good tip. You won't go far wrong doing that. ever fish commercials Clive uh, yeah I've flirted with fishing commercials I've never really got into it as, um, as something I've wanted to do I've flirted with it in the close season I've uh, been to venues locally around here I've enjoyed it but it's just it's not the same as river fishing for me um, it's a nice change but now I tend to do the bream fishing in the close season uh, I go to places like Earlswood and uh, Ara Valley, places like that, Banbury Res. That's where I tend to go now in the closed season. But yeah, if it, commercial fishing, it's, you've got to do that or do the other. I think if you're going to be good at commercial, you've got to be focused 100% on it. Uh, I found just doing it for three months a year just. No, I was just too far behind every time. And I started to catch back up with the situation. And then I'm going back on the river. And then nine months' time, I'm back on there. And it was just, no, no, you just got to put everything into what you do. I'd say that to any young angler, really, who wants to come through and fish matches. Um, find out what you like doing. Pick an area, you know, obviously do different things. But once you've found something you like doing, uh, a method you like doing, a way of fishing that you like doing, work on that, and then you can obviously begin to think about fishing matches on that discipline. Um, I'd say the biggest fault you can do is try and spread yourself into everything. You can't be good at everything. You can be good at two or three things these days. Um, most people have only got a couple of days a week to go fishing, so put all the effort into a couple of things and you'll become good at it. That's a good one, Lee. On um, fledgering in matches, I just discussed a little bit with flat float fishing about getting the shot in just right. Um, I do see a lot of people will just look at the peg and pull out a 30 gram flat float. And, you know, if the peg's six foot deep, they'll set it eight foot and just lie the thing on. Um, that to me is, it's not fishing it correctly. Um, and that's, it's causing this feeling of people float ledgering. Um, if they start doing it right, if it's fish right, then there's not really a, an argument with it, it is float fishing. But there's people that just, they're not doing it right, but that's not, I believe, intentional. Um, they just see it like, you know, they think they want a big flat float to fish for barbel, 20, 30 gram, and they probably the peg might only need three or four gram. So, you know, it's just a case of thinking about what you're doing and, and and looking at the float and saying, do I need 30 gram to fish this peg? If the answer's no, then you should be fishing less. You know, it's as simple as that, really, and, and getting the shot in right. And the critical point, really, is making sure that the, the, the bulk, whether you're using an olivet or drill bullets or shot, they need to be up off the bottom. Um, they need to be well off the bottom, really, six inches, foot, and then laying possibly just a foot of line on the bottom, with some drop shots, eights, all the way through to BBs if they want. But the critical thing is having that bulk shot off the bottom. It's the most important thing. Once that bulk weight's off the bottom, it's float fishing. That's, the, that's my way of thinking. 
and floats for Beaudley. Um, depends on the swim, really, Lee. I'm mean, looking at carrying a range of floats from insert peacock wagglers through to balsa floats. There's so much diversity on that stretch of water that, you, you know, there's not really one float that can do all. You need to have like a, a good cross section of wagglers from 3BB right the way up to four or five swan. Um, bolo wise, two gram up to four or five gram. Um, balsa floats, really anything from um, a couple of gram through to seven or eight gram. So you need to have a real, real good selection of different floats to approach Beaudley. Stick floats again, anything from two number four through to 10 and 12 number four will cover most of the fishing at Beaudley. Uh, what match do I look forward to the most each year? Uh, well, there's, there's so many now. There's so many good events to look forward to. Um, I always look forward to the Y Festival. Um, it's not that that event is not kind to me, but I just love fishing there. And uh, I'm sure one day I'll get a good peg on all three days. Uh, I've had good pegs on one day and done okay, uh, but there always seems to be one day that undoes me. Um, it's a visit to a poor peg, or uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an incredibly difficult venue to to win. That's a difficult venue to win that festival on. So many talented anglers down there now. You've really got to be on top of your game to to get the best out of the swims. You know, you and you make a mistake, you're not going to get away with it. It's just too much talent there to to make a mistake. You've just got to really be on it. Missed any, missed any questions? Reese Simpson. Oh, that's a good script. That's good. I think I've answered that one. Uh, What's the best way of keeping maggots as fresh as possible until you use them? I think the best way is um, if you've got a fridge is to put them into plastic bags, tie them up, squeeze all the air out um, and then just put them in the fridge. They'll keep for weeks and weeks like that. Certainly a couple of weeks. You know, it's a, having them open, just amazing. They, 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 they'll go off in terms of casters. actually quite a good way actually of um, using um not dead maggots but but maggots that are just they're not they are alive um but they're not just all going rotten like they are when they've been in the freezer so if you tie the air out of them put them in the fridge for a couple of weeks um they become very very good uh, maggots for bream fishing because they're not they're not active by that point but they are still alive the, 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 when you freeze them, it, it tends to just kill them. Um, once they're exposed to the air, they'll they'll go black. So yeah, it's a good way of keeping them a good good dead maggot. Put it that way. Oh, Ari, um, how do I approach roach on a fast river like the air of the Trent when there's no colour in the river? I don't have a pole. Okay, so you're just fishing running line. Um, it's fast and deep. Um, sometimes roach, in the summertime, uh, did you see the wind? Uh, no. In the summertime, roach will want to come up in the water if you loose feed. Um, so I'd probably fish a, a stick strung out. So you'd be lucky, depending on how deep the swim is, if it's eight foot, ten foot, then fish an eight number four stick, but with a string of shot, 
give us double eights or sixes and spread them out down the line um, and just run that through. That'll work really well if there's no small nuisance fish in the peg. If there's, there's a say, bleak and little dice and stuff, you might want to fish a bolo then as a bulk shot and uh, feed ground bait for a dark ground bait. You mentioned the water's clear, so use a dark ground bait. Um, certainly the river yare, I'd be looking at a, a bolo pattern um, for some of the deeper pegs. Some of the, There is shallower pegs down there, but you can fish the stick on quite close. Um, so again, you could lose speed it or you could put a dark ground bait in. That would probably be uh, what I would do there in that situation. Ideally on the on the year you'd want a pole really. I know you mentioned you haven't got pole, but pole to, pole to hand, different pole to hand methods tends to be the way to go on the year. <laughs> Biggest barbel clive, well, I don't tend to weigh them individually that often. Um, I've had a lot of barbelling matches around £10. Um, I think the biggest one I've weighed in the match is £11. Uh, I've caught bigger ones, pleasure fishing, but I'm not someone who, who weighs them. I'll catch them and, you know, admire them for what they are, and I tend to just put them back. I'm not, you know, that's it from pleasure fishing in the match, as I say, I've had them to £11 in matches. There are big fish here in the Seven now. There's, there's fish up to £13 here. That I've seen, seen other anglers catch. So there's lots of, lots of, they're getting bigger everywhere, that's them finding, and to fish heavier and heavier to get them out. What's the most, most bait I feed on a match? Um, the amount of bait you use is always determined really on what's going on in the peg. Um, I find you, you use more bait when you're trying to feed off nuisance fish. Um, if you've got a good peg with a reasonable quality of fish in it, you're not going to get through that much bait. Um, you know, you're going to be using feeding regularly um, and, and, and playing a landing fish. If you're in a position where there's loads of little dice in a peg, you can get through the 10 pints of maggots on the Y. Um, I tend to err on the side of the caster now, more on there anyway. They tend to help me catch a better stamp of fish on the Y. So probably six or seven pints of casters i'd take with me um some maggot to bleak so you get three or four pints of maggot with me as well hemp five or six pints of hemp you do need an absolute your carry all's pretty heavy when you've gone down there with bait for sure and then you draw a section and don't need any Simplicity commercial fishing. How do we feel? Um, I think the simplicity of commercials raised down to a uh, lots to do with being able to park close by. Um, if there was more running water venues where you could actually park behind your peg, I think more people would fish rivers. Um, a lot of people now they're getting older. A uh, lot like of the match angling fraternity are all getting older. Um, that's the problem, access, big problem on rivers. Uh, would be nice to see more venues where we can get in, park behind our pegs. I think I've already mentioned Shrewsbury. You know, now they've got that bang on there with the, the parking for the festival. You just pay a tenner or whatever it is at the start of the festival and you're parking behind your peg for three days. So it's, that is a real move forward to keep the attendance up. Do I miss the old days? I think we all miss being young. When, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think the fishing in the Seven was so much better when I was a, a teenager. The amount of big roach in the river here was incredible back then. Um, two pound fish were, you know, commonplace. They're not now. I mean, you catch a two pounder now, it's something special. There's, few, there's still more probably big roach on the Y now than the Seven. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I do miss it when it was like that. We had some fantastic matches down here back in the day um, when Stan Lewis was running um, float only matches and Stourport was, you know, you had some class anglers going to Stourport back then. And, you know, you won a match on there and, you you know, you really knew you'd arrived to beat that sort of calibre of guy fishing there. And the fishing was just out of this world when you look at the amount of 
every peg had got 10, 12 pound in it. And the better pegs had got, you know, up to 20 pound. But they were never like runaway huge weights. I think what we've got now is a situation where there's all this migratory shoaling in the winter. And it really is, it's, it's meaning the draw is a lot more important than it used to be. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And hopefully things may change in the future. But we'll just keep going and doing the best we can with what we've got. Um, I, I don't know, Paul. I think, um, yeah, it was high through the winter. There was a lot of water in the river this winter, for sure. Um, five and a half metres down here. Um, it's going to have an impact on small fish. They'll get washed into the fields. Um, I think the bigger fish, no, the bigger fish seem to be okay. We fished a festival here just before the end of the season. There was lots of barbel caught. Um, but, yeah, I think the silverfish might be you know, in decline a little bit, but um, there'll still be plenty there to catch, I'm sure. Uh, I think that's probably it really for tonight. I mean, as I say, is it any more questions? Just let me just uh. Ah, uh, where will I go fishing when the lockdown ends? That's a good one, isn't it? I think uh, it's probably likely to be a pleasure session, isn't it? Um, I'd like to think we'll be match fishing by by the start of the season, but I'm really not sure. Um, now it's most likely be pleasure fishing on the river, I'd imagine somewhere. Um, I can wait till June the 16th. I've waited now. I've not gone fishing for seven weeks. Another few weeks won't hurt. Uh, biggest match win, uh, Mark. Yeah, there's been, uh, been a lot over the years and I've been lucky and very fortunate in that sense that I've drew some good pegs and been able to get the best from them. I think the biggest win, uh, there's just too many to really uh, pick one particular one out. It's just been so many great times, really. Um, so, you know, for different reasons. There's, I think, oh, well, I suppose, yeah, that big bag of roach at Shrewsbury, which I've already mentioned, it was just such a a great win for a number of different reasons. Um, the fact the venue come back to life. Um, the calibre of the event I was fishing as a Riverfest qualifier. So, yeah, it meant a lot to win that. Um, but, the, but as I say, there's been, there's been so many. I've been fortunate. So as I say, it's quite strange doing this. It just feels very odd. Oh, 
I'm going to sign off now. So um, hope I see all you guys on the bank soon. Um, and hopefully, you know, yeah, it is only a few weeks now. We can all be back doing what we like doing the most. So in the meantime, let's get plenty of prep done. I'll see you all soon.